Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Big Bros Podcast. My name is Elan, and I'm joined by my lovely friend and co-host, Jeremy. How are we? I'm well, mate. I'm uh, keen to kick this one off again. So take it away. What are we talking about today? Have you heard of a term called retroactive jealousy? I have, but I must say it only came to mind for me around this year. I hadn't heard of it previously. Is it one of those buzz terms? Is it one of those things that we're more so recently talking about as opposed to previously? I mean, it could be a buzz term, but I think it's a very common phenomenon that a lot of people do experience in relationships. So without further ado, it's pretty much the idea that you feel threatened, insecure and uncomfortable by a partner's past relationships, whether it be casual, one night stands or even long term relationships that they have had. Yeah. So it almost fills this person up with so much anxiety. Just the thought of them having a past that doesn't include you, it can really be a debilitating feeling. Yeah, I think we've all been through this to some extent and have either felt it ourselves or have been with someone that has definitely shown that they have a lot of retroactive de- jealousy. It's a tough one to deal with. It's a tough one to deal with whether you are experiencing it or whether someone that you're with is experiencing it because I personally think it's more so just something that you're going to have to accept rather than work on. I think it's not really one of those things that you can actively try to work on. Like how do you try to work on becoming unjealous of something? I feel like it's just a matter of acceptance. But yeah, I felt it. I've been with people that have had it as well and it sucks. It's, it, there's nothing short of saying how bad it sucks. And there's really not much you can do rather than just accept that, yeah, I've had a past. The person that I'm with has had a past. But think about why we're together now. I mean, it's an interesting one because in a lot of ways, people will experience it and not think it's of it as a quite a common thing. But it is, I think. I think it's very, yeah, I think very, it's very common. common. And I like what you said there. I think everyone's probably felt it to an extent. I think you naturally do, but it depends to the extent that it debilitates you. Yep. So there's two things I want to say. First one is, I like what you said there with acceptance, but I think it stems, and we can talk about solutions afterwards. I think it just boils down to a self-esteem and personal confidence thing. If you can address those two factors, they tend to go a long way alongside accepting the whole situation. But another aspect of it is if everyone, if anyone in our listener base is familiar with OCD, um, obsessive compulsive disorder, it operates in a very similar way in that you've got your obsessions. So you as a partner have these obsessions that your partner, you know, your current partner had this past. So you, you have these obsessions that revolve around their specific, you know, sexual past, what they've done, how long they've been with an ex all these questions and they'll become obsessions and then you have the compulsion. So the compulsion is the behavior that the person enacts. So that behavior for a lot of people who deal with retroactive jealousy is literally asking that partner, what did you get up to? How long were you with them? How were they in bed? And you know, it relieves a temporary anxiety, but it becomes a vicious cycle. So sure, you got the answer that you wanted, but do you feel any better than you did before? You feel worse. You feel worse. And what happens is it reinforces a cycle. Now imagine you're the one, you're the partner who you feel like, what the hell have I done? Like I can't control my past and my, you know, my boyfriend, my girlfriend, they're, they're inundating me with these questions, almost trying to guilt me. And it becomes just a toxic situation for both of you. And, you know, it's, it's one of those things you can repair. It's something that you can deal with. Some, there's this dating coach online called Jake Maddock and he's kind of blown up. He's, um, he, he's very straight edged in, in his advice and his whole solution to retroactive jealousy is when you're getting to know someone, don't tell them your body count. Don't tell them who you've been with in the past because once retroactive jealousy sets in, the relationship is over. So he looks at it in a very black and white way. It's like, why is it important for you to know your partner's past? And the thing is, In a lot of ways, that sort of methodology could work for a lot of couples. Why is it really relevant knowing who you've been with in the past? For some though, you know, you're going to know and then you're going to have all these, you know, insecurities and it probably points to one thing and I think it points to a self-confidence issue at the end of the day. Well, you're not achieving anything by having that conversation, I feel. There's no reaching common ground in a conversation where you ask your partner, tell me about your past 
experiences, sexual experiences? What were they like with your exes? It's okay to talk about, you know, exes here and there or not talk about it, but, you know, obviously as part of a relationship, you're going to get to the stage of telling your ex about, you know, sorry, telling your partner about, you know, your exes or the experiences that you've had and what's made you the person you are today. Like these things come up in in conversation naturally. But I think when we think about true retroactive jealousy, it's it's asking your now partner about those experiences that you had rather than the people that you were maybe with. You know, it's what was, yeah, like you said, what were they like in bed? What did you get up to together? What kind of dates did you do? How did you treat each other? How did you, you know, feel when you were with them? All of these questions is and it's not going to achieve anything it's going to leave you feeling crap and it's it's not going to bring you guys closer together i think this is maybe a form of like if we want to call it vulnerability because you are opening up you're being vulnerable but it's not a it's not a branch of vulnerability that's going to bring you guys closer together in any way and if people think that it does i, I would love to hear why but I truly don't think it can bring you guys together. It's just going to create internal conflict and and toxicity between you guys because you're going to constantly be comparing your now relationship together with past relationships you've been with. And there's these trends on TikTok that kind of relate to it and come to mind when I think about retroactive jealousy. And it's, it's typically done where, you know, the girlfriend asks the guy or tests the guy that she's with about, you know, would you rather be with me or the hottest girl in the world? Or, you know, it's, it's those types of questions and it brings the partner to a point where they just feel upset. And then they question whether the person loves them just because of like misinterpretation of the question and delivering answers that they don't want to hear in that moment. But I feel like there is no answer that you can give that's going to make a partner happy because if the partner is asking you questions about the past and you just say you say what they are yes that's you being honest but you're not going to make the partner feel at ease by being honest and then if you just constantly give affirmations that oh but don't worry babe you're you're better than that person and everything that we do is way better and all of that it just sounds like you're trying to appease the question and you know, the mind of the the girl is going to be thinking, "Mm, really, like, how do I truly know what they're thinking? Because you don't truly know what they're thinking. So it doesn't matter what you say, because whatever you say, you're just going to leave the partner still questioning that moment and that conversation. And however way that conversation ends, it's still going to leave this sour taste and this, this kind of sense of walking away from that conversation thinking, was that really necessary? Did I grow closer to that person by having this conversation think about it like this if you're then going to go down this rabbit hole and start asking and peppering them with questions yeah. that almost seem like you're a private investigator imagine how that partner's going to feel they've just you know tried to connect with you by sharing about their deepest and darkest you know moments in their past and all you're doing is just trying to get info out of them it's not a good way to build connection but i want to talk about some people who might be more vulnerable to experience it because I feel like, and maybe, you know, agree or disagree with me, I feel as though people who are very self-confident aren't going to, they're less likely to experience uh, retroactive jealousy. What do you reckon? Well, it comes back to that point you said before of self-esteem. People with low self-esteem are also more more vulnerable to, to feeling this way. Goes hand in hand, absolutely. And that's where we talk about readiness to be in a relationship. If you are suffering incredibly with low self-esteem you don't feel like you you know the the kind of person that you are and the person that you want to be with and the person that you want to be in your next relationship you need to do a lot of work before entering it and that's just the that's just the hard truth because you're then going to become a burden for the person that you're now with i used to believe that you could be a fixer in relationships i learned that you can't be you can't fix someone's issues, problems, challenges that they're going through if they're not willing to put in the work to help themselves. None of us are perfect and we all have things that we need to work on. So that's not to say you must enter a relationship feeling like an invincible star and 
you've got no imperfections about you. We all have these imperfections that we got to embrace, but you have to enter knowing that, yes, I've got these imperfections and these potential insecurities, but I'm doing the work for them and, and, and recognizing how you're doing the work for them so that you can voice it with your partner and be a team when it comes to talking about these things and working through them. But if you aren't that person where you're actually putting in the work, you, you know you've got this trauma and these challenges, but you're not actually doing anything about it, you're just going to be burdening your partner. They're going to try to fix you. They're going to quickly realize it's not going to work. You can't fix someone. And that's where that low self-esteem continues to spiral and where you eventually self-sabotage. So it's it's a downward slope entirely. And I feel like that is a natural progression of someone that does resemble having that really low self-esteem. So how do you fix that? I want to quickly clarify something you said. So you said that yep. that person who's entering that relationship, you're not suggesting that they've solved everything, right? No. But what I just want to say, if you, are, you and I are on the same page, what are you suggesting this person does if, you know, they enter this relationship and it's their first relationship where they're experiencing retroactive jealousy. Are you suggesting that they now leave that relationship to work on themselves or are you open to the idea of them working on that, them taking the onus of responsibility in recognizing, hey, this is not a you problem, it's a me problem. I'm going to do whatever it takes to you know, solve my confidence issues, to solve my self-esteem issues so that I don't burden you with this. Are you suggesting that that can only be done outside of the relationship or can it be solved within the relationship as well? I don't think it's a matter of solution. I think, like I said earlier, I think it's a matter of acceptance and that acceptance can be done in the relationship. So let me w- rephrase that question. Can you, so you, you can do it within the relationship. You can work on these issues within the relationship. You're not saying that that person needs to leave the relationship. You can work on it within the relationship. You don't have to leave your relationship. You shouldn't leave the relationship, but you should still be in that relationship knowing that this person that you're with is not there to fix your problems. They're there to help you through your problems if you're willing to help yourself. If you're not willing to do that whilst in a relationship with another person, if you feel like you don't have the strength and the capacity to do that, that's when you might have to consider leaving because maybe there hasn't been enough self-work done prior to entering this relationship. If you feel completely incapacitated and unable to work through these challenges these these retroactive jealousy tendencies and these insecurities if if you feel like you don't know where to start and you need to do it within your own time without the without the relationship there that's something for you to consider but it's not to say that that's what should happen i feel like ultimately you should be willing to work through it knowing that it's your responsibility and that the person that you're with is not there to fix it because that's ultimately what it is. It's not their fault that you're feeling jealous about their past. That's called being a human. We've all experienced a past and that's why I think it's a matter of acceptance rather than how can I you know, get out of this jealous mindset. It's just about accepting that, you know what? Yeah, this person had a past just like I did and it's unfair for me to be so jealous about that past when I've had a past myself. Yeah, um, I wouldn't subscribe to the fact that you should, you know, leave the relationship consistently just to work on this issue when you can work on this issue on your own within the context of the relationship because even if you leave the relationship, you work on yourself and you get into a new relationship, chances are the same feelings are going to arise again. That same exposure is going to, you know, elicit you with feelings of discomfort but you know the solution there isn't to leave every relationship where retroactive jealousy occurs it's just to work on it head on but i will say there's a caveat and working it it to working on it together yeah to a certain degree i will say though there are probably cases where you're better off just leaving that relationship and i'll give you an example if you're someone who values sexual purity what i mean by that is you want to be with a partner who doesn't have a high body count who hasn't slept with many people who hasn't had many relationships and that's like a value of yours, which is fine for some people. It's a, it's a, you know, a deal breaker. Chances are you probably shouldn't be in that relationship with them. And it's unfair of you to expect them to mold into the value that you have and that you live for yourself 
because you shouldn't have been in a relationship with them in the first place because they can't change that. And if that's a deal breaking value for you, it's not even because you're jealous. It's just because you value sexual purity and you want to be with someone who, you know, serves or behaves in a way in service of that value. So I think there's a caveat there. I think a lot of people might get confused as well. They might be with someone who they might not necessarily value sexual purity, but they become insecure of the fact that who they're with, they have a high body count. Because in their mind, they're thinking, fuck, like I don't have much experience myself. But if this person has a lot of experience with other people, what chance do I have? They know what they like. I don't even know what I like. You know, I I don't know how to perform in this realm. And that's where insecurities can start coming about. And that's why I think you can work on those things within the relationship. But I'd argue that if you've got, you know, you're placing emphasis on sexual purity as like a deal breaking value, you shouldn't be in a, a relationship with someone who, you know, doesn't have that value like you do it's a really good point because yeah being young and being in your 20s you're probably likely to enter relationships and enter dating with people that maybe have not had as much sexual experience as you've had and that's why it's a really nice point because the worst thing you can do is make that person either feel guilty for not having the same amount of experiences that you've had or rather threatening that if they don't, you know, improve with whatever it is you're doing, like sexually and, in, and intimately, then that might, that might, you know, hijack the relationship entirely. It's about being collaborative about it. So the worst thing that you can do is, you know, make someone feel uncomfortable for that. Because you mentioned sexual purity and differences in amount of sexual partners versus the partner that you're with. And it happens. It's a very real thing. You know, if you, if you're in a relationship with someone and they've had like, let's say double the amount of sexual partners that, that you've had, it's normal to feel a little bit insecure because you're just thinking like, well, the person that I'm with now has had more experience with than me. They probably know a lot more than I do. They're probably a lot better at like, you know, having sex than maybe I am. So naturally that's going to make you feel a little bit insecure what's the solution for that though i think just you know talking about that with your partner and collaborating with that you know and hopefully you're with someone that says to you you know what that does not matter i i am with you because i want to be with you for the person you are and yes sexual stuff is important absolutely it's important but that's something that we will work on together we will build together and that's part of being a team that's part of being in a relationship about working out what you like and don't like, the worst thing that you can do is, you know, make make your partner feel awkward for not being as active as maybe you've been in your past. Yeah, and I think a couple of things there, which is if you're someone who's slept with 20 people and your partner slept with 40 people, right, as like a really clear cut example, and you might be insecure, it's not because you value sexual purity in that case, it's purely because you're just insecure that maybe your performance isn't satisfying them, right? Um, if you're someone who had who slept with zero people and they've slept with 40 people and, you know, for you sexual purity is a big deal, then you're probably in the wrong relationship. But assuming you're kind of experiencing the former, which is you've got those retroactive feelings, there are some really good things to keep in mind. Yes, we spoke about acceptance, but there's a few things that are probably helpful reminders. The first thing is it's not an uncommon feeling. We spoke about this earlier, but most people, especially in their first few relationships, especially in their late adolescence, early 20s, mid 20s, they will experience this sort of phenomenon. For some, it might be more debilitating than for others. What do you think? Absolutely. Acceptance and realizing that you're not alone, point number one. If we talk, talk about point number two, I would say it's about reassuring your partner and having good communication. Voice to your partner that you know, you've got tendencies to feel a little bit insecure and perhaps at times jealous knowing that you know that your now boyfriend or your now girlfriend has had these experiences potentially with someone else and and just voicing that and that's okay to voice that but it's only okay to voice that if you do so delicately and don't make your partner feel bad for having those experiences i think you know all you want in that moment is to just get a little bit of reassurance and hopefully you know you're with a partner that will just reassure reassure you by saying yeah you know of course i've had past experiences but 
their 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 past experiences for a reason. They're they're in the past. I'm with you now, and and this is this is us. This is this is us together now. And I've chosen to be with you, and I love you. And giving that reassurance is is the only way forward in that scenario. Like we said earlier, it's about collaboration. It's about being a team. When the moment you start either pedestalizing yourself over your partner or making your partner feel bad about their past that's the moment that you're purposely creating distance between each other and causing conflict so reassurance and love in that scenario is point number two what do you reckon about point number three so it's understanding that the insecurities they arise from the fantasy you build up in your head you know in your head you're thinking about all the things that your current partner has gotten up to and you know some very graphic details might come up in your head that's not to say your partner's actually thinking about any of those things. For all you know, they've probably blocked it out of their mind. They're probably focused only on you. You'd hope they are. And in all likelihood, if they are with you, and as you said, if they've chosen you, they are likely just focusing on you. What that means is everything you're thinking of, it's a fantasy built within your head. You're the one creating it, not them, right? They've told you maybe a little bit of information. You've taken that information and you've just extrapolated it within on it within your head. And you're thinking about all these potential scenarios. And guess what? That's going to absolutely hijack how you're feeling about the entire situation. So understanding that it's your fantasies that are creating this, it's not necessarily reflective of reality. Fourth thing to keep in mind as well is, again, remembering that this person has chosen to be with you for you and that the relationship you guys have is unique and cannot be compared to other past relationships. It's like comparing apples to oranges you might be with someone that's completely different to a, a past person. And I would, I would think that you, you would be with someone that is completely different in a way because otherwise, what have you learned from your past relationships, right? Understanding that and understanding that, you know, this is a unique scenario now that you guys are in together and you are now present in that moment and you're going to do everything you can to be the best partner that you can be for your partner right now is the ultimate the ultimate mindset that you should have and and why you know any any sense of comparison to past relationships and asking your partner about comparing to past relationships is the ultimate no-no and the ultimate form of toxicity I would say between you guys because like I said earlier it's just building up that wall and creating distance and a barrier between you guys we want to build that collaboration. So again, going back to that reassurance, recognizing that this is now unique, this is special, what you guys have now is special and beautiful in its own right is important to keep in mind. I reckon it's so insulting to even try and compare your relationship. I yeah. think it's, it's why are you, you know, insulting your relationship like that? It should be incomparable, right? By putting it, by asking your partner, is this relationship better than the one you've been before? First of all, it should be a given if they're still in the relationship with you. I mean, the ex is an ex for a reason, but I, I find that it's, it's, it's ultimately just insulting because as you said, you can't compare apples to oranges. And at the same time, what you can't compare one unique situation to another unique situation. They're special in their own way. And it's okay for you to accept the fact that, yeah, your partner who is had an entire past they had some nice moments with their exes they had you know some really life-changing moments but you probably did as well yeah. right but you don't sit here reflecting on your past consistently mm. right and i think if you reflect on your past relationships in a positive light i think that's only green flags at the end of the day you know if you're constantly denigrating your past relationships and talking really badly about all your relationships in the past what does that say about you that probably says that you know maybe you're the common common denominator here if you're constantly talking badly about all the past people that you've been with hopefully you've got some nice things to say about the, the past people that you've been with because that's hopefully shaped the person that you are now so talking about it in a positive light can be good if it comes up in conversation yeah. and you know that's not to say that you should be outspoken about all the things that you've done in your past but you know just recognizing, yeah, you know, I had these past memories and they were great at the time. And But that's all they are. They're past memories now. And they're past memories for a reason. But the ultimate thing that will probably help you navigate retroactive jealousy is building your self-confidence. 
there's a few things I want to talk about here. And it's the idea that if you can mold yourself into the best boyfriend or girlfriend, husband or wife, and you, in a way, if you write down all the best qualities you can be in the form of a boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, and you live up to those qualities, I feel like your retroactive jealousy will dissipate with time as well. Because think about how much you're watering that plant right? In the back of your head, you're cognitively saying, well, if my relationship is elevated and it's getting watered and it's growing, well, even if I'm insecure about my my partner potentially comparing it against, you know, the past, ultimately what we've got now is so much better anyway, right? So it's like, if you fuel those insecurities, so it's fine to acknowledge you've got those insecurities, but then if you can reframe it and almost be like, okay, well, if if I'm really insecure that maybe my partner's not happy now, even though she's never said that, but I can just, you know, motivate myself to be the best partner possible. Well then, you know, she'll only compare yours in the most positive way. It'll just reinforce the fact that they're happy to be in the relationship that they're in. Just like a friendship, treat people the way you want to be treated. Treat your partner the way that you would want to be treated by your partner. And I think that's a beautiful message there trying to be active in your response to this and i think that's the best way to be active is yeah note down the actions that you you want to portray to your partner and be communicative about that and actionable about that and the last point i do want to say and maybe this is me speaking from anecdotal experience but you know i never had terrible retroactive jealousy you just have natural insecurities when you're younger that goes away i i can promise you it can go away in time the longer you're in a relationship the more likely it is those feelings tend to just dissipate because ultimately you accept it as you say you grow on your self-confidence and then you realize wow it's like what is that to compare to because it's the whole uniqueness aspect Mm. what you've built with this person you can't really compare it to anything else because it's special in its own way and you've been with them for so long that it's like it'd be you're trivializing your relationship by comparing it to anything that that other person has experienced within the past love it mate on that note guys Keep in mind that, you know, like we said at the start, you're not extraordinary for feeling a sense of retroactive jealousy. It's part of being human. Just like we spoke about in previous episodes, the fact that, you know, we socially compare, it it relates to this. Social comparison is a natural part of being human. And with that, self-acceptance is the only way forward. Accepting that, yeah, you will feel a little bit jealous at times, but how are you responding to that is, is the true telling sign are you responding in a way that is making you a better partner, bringing you and your partner closer together or creating distance? Food for thought. We would love to hear what you guys have to say about it. So let us know. Otherwise, happy Tuesday and have a good week. Adios.